Okay, so now I'm just going to really briefly go over sentiment analysis. So sentiment analysis is essentially a way to score um, the, the types of words that are used in open-ended responses. So you can use this for analyzing comments on social media of a given topic. You can use it for open-ended responses about opinions on any given topic. In ecology and conservation, for example, you might go and try to assess um, the population's uh, perceptions of elephants, let's say. So you want to assess the extent of human-elephant conflict in the area. If you have strong positive responses, that's generally meaning that there's, there's low amounts of um, conflict, right? If you have strong negative responses and fear and anticipation and just overall negativity, then you know that there's, there's a problem in the population that you're actually sampling. sampling. So I'm just going to go over kind of uh, duality of situations here and I'll explain as I go. So the data that I'm reading in right now, that is um, a narrative history of a bunch of species that are considered to have gone extinct in Vietnam. So we have um, some species that are globally not extinct and some that globally are extinct. So we have the rationale, which is a open-ended narrative of why um, the global IUCN red list assessment has been made. We have geographic range, population, um, habitat, threats, blah, blah, blah. All of these are open-ended responses that you can find on the IUCN red list. So it's all compiled here into one data frame. Um, but in your case, you might be using open-ended questions or open-ended responses rather for whatever number of reasons. I'm just going to use this as a example. So I'm going to pull out the rationale, and I'm going to use this function here. Uh, I'll just put a question mark and then go to the documentation, which will show up in the bottom right. right so this is just converting character vectors between encodings. Um, and this is just a way to prepare it for a word cloud and also for sentiment analysis. So it's a beginning step. So you're using the column that has your open-ended responses. In this case, I'm pulling out the conservation measures and the rationale. So this is the conservation assessment narrative. And this is the conservation measures that have been applied to the animals. The reason why I'm doing this is because rationales usually have a mixture, right? So it's like you're saying the population might be decreasing, but there's hope because there's this conservation measure or this geographic range extension that was just found. Whereas the conservation measures are basically focusing on the positive. What positive conservation measures has there been taking, um, their effectiveness and all of that. So if we look at the rationale, we see it's just talking about population and species, habitat and range, very general stuff. And then if we look at the conservation, um, we can see, okay, it's talking about conservation, protected, um, actions, population, all of these kind of positive words, right? So now we're going to get the NRC sentiments. So I'm just gonna go and read the documentation really quick so that we can see what this does. So you're getting emotions and valence from the NRC dictionary. So when we think of sentiment analysis, we're thinking of what's called a lexicon. And a lexicon is the large database where all of these words and their associated emotions or um, perceptions are stored, right? So in the Suzyet package, this has a few very large lexicons. Um, it says you can change the language, but I'm not exactly sure how many languages are, are stored in this. Um, we might have to check into the documentation a little bit further, and that might be one of the limitations of using this, that it might not have your language, and you might need to translate and clean the data to English to have the largest lexicon available, right? So that's just one limitation. Anyway, so We'll get the sentiments for this, 
and this. And then we'll check the head of the data frame. And you can see that there's a count, right, for each of the words that fall under this category in each of the, um, the vector responses. And then we can visualize that. So we look at the sentiment score for um, the red list assessments, and we can see, rightfully so, there's some anger and anticipation, right? If the population might be declining, so there's some anticipatory words that indicate that fear that the species might go extinct or sadness that the species has already gone extinct. Trust, maybe, that the conservation actions might be working. And then you have your negative and positive associations with each of so you can see in this that there is actually a more positive response in the narratives and the rationale than um, the negative response. And this might be pointing to, okay, there is enough conservation measures that the species might go extinct, or there is enough geographic range that they might be okay on a, on a global level. And then if we do our bar plots in the same way for the conservation actions, of course, we have an overwhelmingly positive response because that's the way the language is charged, right, and trust. There's a little bit of negative, maybe talking about whether the uh, action plans will fail or whether or not there actually is an action plan. Um, and then, you, of course, you always have anticipation and fear in any kind of uh, red list assessment rationale because you don't know if what you're doing is going but this is just a basic idea of how sentiment analysis works and how you can interpret the outcomes when you're um, analyzing your own data. So open-ended responses, you have the hy hypothesis of, okay, this might be strongly positive, strongly negative, or maybe a little bit ambiguous. And you can get the general emotions of the, um, the respondents based on this.